Imagine we are generating electricity at 11 kilo volts and we are also transmitting the electricity at same 11 kilo volts and we are also distributing the electricity at same 11 kilo volt. Do you think this kind of system will work? Well, absolutely not. Because the first problem is in order to transmit the power in bulk at 11 kilo volt, uh, you will have to build thousands of transmission lines. Similarly, to distribute that power at 11 kV, you will have to build a lot many lines. And the biggest problem is we do not have any equipment, especially the residential load, uh, which can accept 11 kV and operate safely. So certainly, uh, this system where we have one constant voltage through, throughout the different phases of electricity uh, will not work. And that's why we have to transform the voltage value from one stage to another stage. We are generating at one stage, we will change it during the transmission stage and we'll again change it during the distribution stage. And that's where uh, the magical invention of electrical engineering transformer comes into picture. There, it's absolutely a magical device. Let me actually show it to you using a simple circuit simulation. So here we have a very simple circuit. We have a source here, uh, which is generating electricity at 50 Hertz. Then we are connected it to a coil and to the load side, we have a load here and we have another coil. Now what we will do, I'll run this simulation and I'll show you what happens here. So here you can see we have this sending end voltage, which is 141 volts. And the receiving end voltage that is at the load side, we have 282 volts, two times than that of what we are sending. And if I zoom in into the circuit, you will notice that between these two coils, there is no physical connection, absolutely no connection. Despite that fact, we are having voltage at the load side and it's two times than that of uh, the voltage that we are sending. And this is absolutely magical because there is no physical connection. And this device, this two winding device is what we refer to as the transformer. Now you will notice we have voltage at the sending end. We also have voltage at the receiving end uh, or the load end, but there won't be any voltage between these two coil. Let me actually prove it to you using a voltmeter. So uh, I'm going to grab a voltmeter very quickly here. So here is the voltmeter that we have and let me connect it to across the coils here. Right. And we'll also watch its waveform so that we know if there is any voltage. Now I've started the simulator. You can see we have, we have the same voltage, 141 volts, S uh, receiving end also the same voltage, 282 volts, but absolutely there is zero volt across these two coils absolutely no voltage between these two coils, but we do have voltage from at the sending end and also at the receiving end. How is this happening? How come this device is transforming voltage from one end to another end without having any physical connection in between the two windings? And also that is two times that of the voltage. Well, in this video, we are going to break down the working principle of transformer in a simple way that even if you are not from electrical background will understand. So imagine we have a copper conductor, as you can see on your screen, and we bring in some moving flux near to that. Okay. Now, because of this moving flux, what will happen is if we connect a voltmeter across this conductor, we will notice the voltage is measured by this voltmeter. And this is what, this is nothing but the Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction. In simple terms, it says whenever you bring a conductor in a rotating magnetic field, a voltage will be induced in that conductor. And that is what is happening here. So we have rotating magnetic flux and it's going to generate the voltage inside this conductor. Now, please note, it absolutely doesn't matter how this flux are getting generated. It could be either because of the rotating magnets that we have nearby to this conductor or because there is a, another coil which is carrying alternating current or maybe uh, the conductor itself is carrying uh, the current and that's going to generate the flux around it. 
now it's very important thing to remember here in order to generate the voltage inside the conductor we need a rotating magnetic field and in order to have a rotating magnetic field we need to have a rotating supply or alternating supply and which is given by the ac supply only if you connect dc to it to the dc supply or direct current supply it's not going to work because dc is a constant wave form right it's not alternating in nature and that's why the dc will not work uh, uh, in this phenomena the faraday's law of electromagnetic induction clearly states the magnetic field must be rotating magnetic field so that is very very important point to remember and another important point is of course to subscribe to the channel because that's how you will be getting updates on such interesting videos all right so it doesn't matter how you are generating the flux it could be the rotating magnetic uh, magnets around the conductor or another coil who is carrying the current or the coil itself is carrying the current and this faraday's law of electromagnetic induction has given birth to many useful devices and transformer is one of them so let us do one experiment here let's connect a conductor to ac supply the moment we connect the conductor to the supply it's going to generate the magnetic field a rotating magnetic field around it right uh, okay let's let's do one more thing here instead of using a conductor we use a coil okay it's just a conducting material but in a coil format and we notice that when we create a coil out of that the flux that is getting generated around is is more compared to uh, the straight conductor that we had the amount of flux is more and that is the reason why you will always find transformers refer transformer which will have coils and not the straight conductors or for that matter any of the device that works on faraday's law of electromagnetic induction that's why we don't use a straight conductor we use a coil form of that because it gives us a lot many flux right so we will use the coil here and as you can notice it is generating the flux around it now if we bring in another coil near to this coil and what will happen of course you guessed it right this coil will also generate voltage why because we have a rotating magnetic field and that will interlink with this so mutual inductance will happen and the voltage will be generated across this coil if you connect a voltmeter it will have some reading and this combination of two winding is basically what we refer to as the transformer you see we have not connected these two coil physically with the help of wires right but still we have voltage across this coil here and this is certainly a magical invention right there is no physical connection there is electrical isolation between these two but still we have voltage across both the coils and the coil that we connect to the source side is what we refer to as the primary coil and the coil on the secondary side or the to which we connect the load is what we call as the secondary side now it is very important for you to understand that uh, the amount of voltage that will induced in this coil depend on how close or how far you are keeping that coil from the primary coil if it's too far away the voltage induced in the secondary coil will be less or maybe no voltage will be induced and this is what we call as the poor connection right or the poor coupling or if you bring it too close then also it's going to have uh, the impact on the induced voltage right so you have to maintain a specific distance in order to uh, have the right amount of voltage induced in the secondary coil now the current arrangement that you see on your screen is what we refer as the air core why because in between these two coil we have nothing but is simply the air which is allowing uh, the magnetic flux to go and link with the secondary coil that we have the problem with this arrangement is that air do not have very high permeability now what is permeability permeability is in simple terms is the opposition offered to the magnetic flux so air opposes magnetic flux little higher 
right now if you if you want to know more about what is permeability i have a dedicated video on that i'll put link for it down in the description you can go and check it out after this video but in simple terms it's just the opposition that is offered to the magnetic flux so when we are using air uh, it's definitely going to oppose uh, to that magnetic flux because the permeability is less for air and as a result uh, we may have some impact uh, on the induced voltage because the induced voltage is directly proportional to the amount of flux that is linking to that right so how do we address this problem well we address this problem by simply installing a steel core between these two windings and steel is having a very high permeability that means it will offer less amount of resistance to the magnetic flux and as a result high amount of flux will link to the secondary side and we will have good amount of voltage linking good amount of voltage at the secondary side and that's why you will see the construction of transformer as you can see on your screen that is the reason and with the help of this magical device we can have the absolutely efficient power transmission that we have right now the power system that we have right now so you see we are generating power at 11 kilovolts then we are stepping it up up to 800 kilovolts again with the help of transformer again we are stepping it down to 145 kilovolts for example which is what we refer as the secondary transmission again with the help of transformer again when we enter to the distribution phase we are stepping it down to 36 kilovolt again with the help of transformer and then lastly to the secondary distribution phase we are further stepping it down to 440 volts again with the help of transformer now imagine if we don't have transformer in the power system we would not have uh, the efficient power system that we have today so certainly it's very very important device and if you don't know transformer is the most expensive device uh, that we have in the substation in the whole substation so very very important device but if you if you see the single line diagram of uh, power system we have different voltage level and the explanation that i gave you a few minutes ago still do not convince us how the voltage is changing right we are generating 11 kilovolts but how uh, while transmitting it is going to 800 kilo volts how is this change happening well the answer lies between the equation of the induced emf of transformer now this equation is very simple it simply tell us that the induced voltage of uh, the transformer depend on what different things so he you can see it here e is the induced voltage or induced emf which is directly dependent on a constant that is 4.44 times the frequency f times the number of turn n and times the flux that is linking to it so these are all the factor on which the induced voltage depends now what is in our hand what are the things that we can control frequency it's something that we cannot control right it's the power frequency and it's very hard to con for us to control Flux to some extent we can control, right, but not 100%. The thing that remains then is the N, that is the number of turn. So if you play with this number of turn, you will be actually able to transform the voltage from one point to another point. So for example, on the primary side, the number of turn is one. And if I make the secondary as two turn, then I will be having two times the voltage than the primary side. Let me actually prove it to you using uh, the circuit simulator again. So you can see this is the simulator that we saw and here we have at the second, the transformer that we are using is one is to two transformer, right? So the sending end voltage is 141 volts, but the receiving end is 282 volts, two times that of uh, the uh, primary side. Why? Because the number of turns are two times than that of the primary side of uh, the transformer. And this is what we call as a step up transformer, which is stepping up the voltage. Now, similarly, if I increase the number of turn to, let's say three times, and you will see uh, the voltage becomes three times than that of the sending end voltage, which is 442 volts in our case. And of course, if you're thinking what will happen if we reduce the number of turn, 
the voltage will go down let us see that so now i'm going to reduce the number of turn to let's say 50 percent and you will see uh, the secondary side voltage is less now 70.6 volts which is 50 percent of what we are sending and this is what we call as the step down transformer clear that's how voltage are getting transformed uh, in the transformer it depends on the number of turns the combination of uh, the turns ratio that we have in the transformer so those are the two basic types of transformer that we have the step up transformer and the step down transformer now based on the application of the transformer it is further classified into three different types uh, one is the power transformer which is mostly used in the transmission side of the electricity where uh, we have to handle bulk amount of power so these are the huge transformers that we have which will handle 800 kilovolts 420 kilovolts and voltage level uh, to that level that is the power transformer second we have the distribution transformer so as the name suggests they are preferably used at the distribution side and they do not have uh, the capabilities to handle high voltage level their design is completely different the way we design power transformer and the way we design distribution transformer uh, they are completely different right so uh, these are the two types uh, of the transformer and the third type which is what we call as the instrument transformers and they are categorized the current transformer and the voltage transformer which uh, we use it for the measurement and protection purpose now if you are interested in knowing what is the difference between the power transformer and the distribution transformer i have a dedicated video on that you'll get a link for it down in the description you can go and check it out after this video so i hope you have clear idea on how the transformer operate what is the working principle of that and how the voltage is getting transformed from one value to another value now let us quickly recap or have a summary of what we discussed in this video a transformer works on electromagnetic induction which we discussed so if you bring in a coil near to a rotating magnetic field uh, the voltage will induced in that coil the transformer transfer energy from one circuit to another using a magnetic field without direct contact so we saw that we even connected the voltmeter across the two windings and we saw there is absolutely no voltage between these two the voltage change depends on the turns ratio so if you have more turns on the secondary sides it's going to give you higher voltage than the primary if the number of turns are less then it's going to give you less num less voltage than the primary side and transformer is one of the most essential components in the power system for safe and efficient electricity transmission as i mentioned this is also the most expensive equipment of the whole substation so it's very important that you understand the working principle of uh, the transformer. Now if you are interested in learning all about the transformer then I have a very easy to understand course on the transformer where we talk about a lot of things about the ideal transformer and also about the practical transformer. If you are interested I'll put a link for it down in the description you can go and check it out. And if you want me to make few more videos on transformer, please let me know in the comment section on what topic of transformer I should make a video. If I get enough comments on that topic, then definitely I'll be creating one dedicated video on that. If you want to learn more about instrument transformer, I have a dedicated playlist on that. Again, link for it is provided down in the description. So thank you so much for watching guys. If you found this video helpful, then do subscribe and do like this video so that you get notified every time I upload a new video. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in my next one. But till then, keep watching, keep learning.